Welcome students. In this class, we will be learning about formation of differential equations. Now, it is a very important topic. Now, the first and foremost question is, so how and when do we come across of forming a differential equation? Now, this happens when you are given family of curves and from the family of curves, you are asked to obtain a differential equation. Now, how are you going to do that? Now, between the family of curves and to forming a differential equation, there is a process which we call it as differentiate. So, what is the meaning of this? The meaning is, if you are given a family of curves and you are asked to obtain a differential equation, then you will have to use the concept of differentiation to extract or to obtain the differential equation. So having mentioned this, what if you are given a differential equation and you are asked to obtain the family of curves? In that case, you will have to perform the action of integration. So let me reiterate one more time. You are given a family of curves and you are asked to obtain a differential equation. Then the action that is required from you to achieve the requirement is to differentiate. On the contrary, if you are given a differential equation and you are asked to obtain a family of curves, the action that is expected from you is integration or you can use the word integrate. Now having mentioned this, let us move on in achieving from the family of curves the required differential equations that has been associated with the family of curves. Now it is imperative to understand that every family of curve has a unique differential equation associated with so I have that in mind let me read it one more, one more time every family of curves has a unique differential equation associated with in other words no two family of curves will share a differential equation have that in mind. So unique is a very important keyword that you will have to take into account. So we are given this question y is equal to mx and we are expected to form the differential equation. So foremost what we got to do is we will have to start off with differentiating this with respect to x. So when we do that this is going to give me dy over dx m is a constant differential of x will give me 1. So now I can rewrite m to be as dy over dx. Now what is the idea? The idea is whenever you are asked to form the differential equation, you have to get rid of this arbitrary constant. So that is your basic idea. Now I've got this m is equal to dy over dx. Now if I were to take this as 1, therefore I can rewrite 1 as, now I've got this y is equal to mx, right? So I'm going to rewrite this as y over x is equal to m. And then I can safely use, now since m is, this is for your understanding, you don't have to write all these things, okay? Since m is dy over dx, this would imply that y over x is equal to dy over dx. So this is my final solution. All right. So clearly you can see that I have got rid of uh, m. Probably you can either stop here or depending upon your requirement, you can rearrange this. So you can simply say, you can either stop here or you can say that y is equal to x times dy over dx. You can either write it like this. So whatever is the requirement. Based on that, you can formulate or form or present the solution. Now, on the contrary, if you are given this, y over x is equal to dy over dx. So let me have this as a question. Okay, you are given y over x is equal to dy over dx and you are asked to form the family of curves. So how are you going to do that? Now, as I mentioned to you in the start of this class, if you are given the differential equation and you are expected to obtain the family of curves, then all you have to do is to integrate. So that is exactly what we are going to do. So from here, I'm going to rewrite this. Let me start off by presenting the problem. Y over x is equal to dy over dx. 
Now, by using variable separable, which I've already explained to you, we had a class before this. So I'm going to rewrite this as dx over x is equal to dy over y. Now, I will be integrating both sides. Integral of dx over x will give me ln x. Integral of dy over y will give me ln y. Of course, there is a presence of an arbitrary constant. Now, I can either place the arbitrary constant on this side or I can place it on that side. I would like to place the, I don't want to place the arbitrary constant here. I will place the arbitrary constant on the x side. So that this is going to be ln y negative ln x and on the left side you got ln c. It's all constants. Why am I using ln c? Because you have a logarithm here, a logarithm here, so that should also involve a logarithm because I can clearly remove the logarithm from the constant. Now I got a formula. What is the formula? ln a negative ln b. I can rewrite this as ln of a over b. So by this what I can do, I can rewrite this as ln of y over x. On the left, I got ln c. Now, I can clearly remove the logarithm from both sides, and then I can write this as y over x is equal to c. Now, this c can be anything, right? I can also write this c to be as some constant m, and then subsequently rewrite this as y is equal to mx. This is what will be the final solution, where I can say that m is an arbitrary constant. So this is one of the ways that you can obtain this. Probably you can also simplify it in other ways, but no matter in what way that you're simplifying, the family of curves will be y is equal to mx. So this will be the final solution. So having mentioned this, let us move on to other questions, students. Now I would like to give some points to remember. So these are important things that you will have to have it in mind, points to remember. The first one is every family of curve as a unique differential equation associated with it. As I mentioned to you, this is the first point I mentioned to you, right? So no two families will have the same or will share the same differential equation. So I have that in mind. So number two, the number of arbitrary constants, the number of arbitrary constant present in the family of curves reflects the order of the differential equation. So what is the meaning of this? So in the previous case, uh, you can clearly see that we started just with y is equal to mx and there is just one arbitrary constant. And the differential equation that we got is dy over dx is equal to y over x. Now, you clearly, you can see the order of the differential equation over here. The order is actually equal to 1. Why is it equal to 1? Because we add just one arbitrary constant present here. Now, if in case we would have to have, say, probably two arbitrary constants, then the order of the differential equation would become equal to 2. So, this is a very important point. The number of arbitrary constants. I can place an S, present in family of curves, reflects the order of the differential equation. So I have that in mind. So having got this, point number three, when you form a differential equation, the differential equation formed should not contain any arbitrary constant. Okay, this is a very important point. So whenever you have a differential equation that is being formed, you should not have the presence of any arbitrary constant. So these three points which I have given you are vital and key for the study of this particular topic. So we will move on to the next. Students, we are given this question. Form the differential equation which represents the family of curves y is equal to c1 times e raised to the power of c2 times x where c1 and c2 are arbitrary constants. So what are we given? We are given that y is equal to c1 times e raised to the power of c2 times x. Now we have two arbitrary constants. So the order of the differential equations 
is going to be equal to 2. So that is the important observation that we will have to take into account. And that would mean we will have to perform 2 times, or in other words, we will have to perform twice differentiation, right? So now first what I will do is I will differentiate with respect to x. So when I do this, this is going to be y dash is equal to c1 as an arbitrary constant. Differential of this would give me e raised to the power of c2 times x. However, the coefficient of x is c2, so place it there. Now, I can rewrite this as c2 times of c1 e raised to the power of c2 times x. Now, clearly, c1 times e raised to the power of c2 times x is actually equal to y. So, I can write this as c2 times y. On the left-hand side, it's going to be y dash. Now, what I wish to do is I would like to differentiate this again with reference to x. So, this is going to be y double dash is equal to c2 is a constant times y dash. Now, this is equation 2, this is equation 3, and this original one is equation 1. So, now what I wish to do is I would like to divide 2 by 3. Now, when I do that, dividing 2 by 3, what do I get? I get y dash divided by y double dash is equal to c2 times y divided by c2 times y dash. Now clearly c2, c2 can be cancelled. So this would mean I got y dash divided by y double dash is equal to y over y dash. I cross multiply this. I would get y dash raised to the power of 2 is equal to y times y double dash. So this is my final solution to this question. Students, we are given this question. We are expected to form the differential equation of all circles passing through the origin with center on the x-axis. So, let us get the circle drawn first. So, this should be the x-axis we are talking about and the y-axis is over here. This is the origin. Now, the circle is passing through the origin with center on the x-axis. So, approximately this would be the circle. Now, the center is given to be on the x-axis. So, probably you can have a center as some a comma zero. So, that would mean the radius will be from this particular zero comma zero to the center. So, if we were to write the equation of the circle, then the equation of the circle would be x negative a raised to the power of 2 positive y negative 0 raised to the power of 2 is equal to some a squared. If I were to expand this, I get x squared negative 2 times ax positive a squared positive y squared is equal to a squared. Now, clearly I can see the a squared, a squared can be cancelled. I now have x squared positive y squared is equal to 2 times ax. Now, I need to form a differential equation. So, what I will do, I will be differentiating with respect to x. And that would give me, say, 2 times x, positive 2 times y, dy over dx is equal to 2 times a. Now, I can cancel the a's that you, uh, the 2's that you see here. And that would, in turn, give me x positive y times dy over dx is equal to a. Now, our aim is to eliminate this arbitrary constant a. So, if I were to take this as, say, 1, so I can say, therefore, I can rewrite 1 to be as x squared positive y squared. Uh, it's equal to 2 times. In place of a, I will have to substitute x positive y times dy over dx is equal, uh, there is a multiple of x there, so probably I can place an x over here. So, this should be the differential equation that we are looking for. Now, if you want to simplify, you can do that. I can rewrite this as x squared positive y squared is equal to 2 times x squared positive 2 times x y dy over dx. I can keep the y squared here and move the x squared to the other side. So that would give me y squared is equal to 2x squared negative x squared will give me x squared followed by positive 2 times x times y 
dy over dx. So depending upon the requirement, you can afford to stop. So either you over here or over here. If you find this to be as a choice in the MCQ, you opt for this. If you find this to be as a choice, you opt for this. Students, we are given this question. The differential equation whose solution is ax squared positive by squared is equal to 1, where a and b are arbitrary constant. Now, we are expected to find the order of this differential equation as well as the degree. Now, the order can easily be obtained from here. You see that it has got the presence of two arbitrary constants. So, if the constant is 2, the arbitrary constant is 2, then the order should be 2. But the only point here is, how are we going to obtain the degree? So, that is critical. So, now that is our objective. So, let us just start off by saying consider a times x squared positive b times y squared is equal to 1. So, what I will do is I will be differentiating this with respect to x. So, when I do that, this is going to be 2 times x times a positive 2 times y. Of course, differential of y is going to be y dash times b is equal to 0. Now, clearly, I can get rid of this 2 that you see here. So, that would mean I would have, say, x times a positive y times y dash times b is equal to 0. Now, what I would like to do is I would like to divide by b throughout. So this would give me a over b right times x positive y into y dash is equal to 0. So let me take this as 2. Now from here okay let me have this as 1. Now I'm going to be differentiating 1 with respect to x again. Why am I differentiating it again? Because I've got presence of two arbitrary constants. So that's the reason, simple fact. Now when I do that, differential, I'm not choosing this. I'm using this or in other words, I have formulated this because I would like to get rid of this a over b. So that's the reason I have written it like this. But for all other purposes of differentiation, I would be using 1. So if I were to differentiate a times x, I would get a positive. Now y into y dash into b. b is an arbitrary constant that is holding on to y into y dash. So now I will have to differentiate y times y dash by uv method. So u times differential of y dash, that's going to be y double dash, plus v times differential of uh, u, that's going to be differentiation of y, which is going to be y dash is equal to 0. Now, I can rewrite this as a positive b times of y into y double dash positive y dash raised to the power of 2 is equal to 0. Now, I will be dividing by b. So, this is going to give me a over b positive y into y double dash positive y dash raised to the power of 2 is equal to 0. Now from here I can clearly write a over b. Now a over b is equal to negative times of y into y double dash positive y dash raised to the power of 2. So this is what I've got. So clearly I can rename this as 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use 3 in 2. So if I take the value of a over b and substitute here then we have obtained what is really required. That is exactly what I'm going to do. Probably I can use the space over here. Let me just draw this off. So I'm going to say using using 3 into right. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to use 3 into in place of a over b I'm going to substitute this. So that would mean I can say therefore 2 can be rewritten as x times x times in place of a over b I need to substitute this it's going to be negative 
y into y double dash positive y dash raised to the power of 2 positive y into y dash is equal to 0. So this is what I have got. Now the requirement is find the order and the degree. Now clearly I know the order is 2. Right, so I can clearly see that. You see y double dash. The order, probably what I can do is I can place one more parenthesis because of the fact that this is actually negative sign. Though it doesn't matter in case if they trip or I should say if they require something else additional to that, then we will have to take those things also into account. However, in this case, it isn't required. But yet, if in case the choice is featuring this, then we will have to be careful. So clearly, this negative sign is outside of this entire quantity. Okay. Okay, coming back to the order. What is the order here? Clearly, I can see is equal. What is the degree? What is the highest power raised here? for the highest order. So in other words, what is the power of the highest order? That is what is required. That is going to give me the degree. Right? So what is the degree? Degree is going to be 1. Students, we are given this question. The differential equation representing the family of curves y squared is equal to 2 times c of x positive root of c with c greater than 0 is of dash order and dash degree. So you are expected to find the order and degree in this case. So let me start out by writing the given quantity. So we are given y squared is equal to 2 times c times x positive 2 times c times the root of c. Now what I would do is I will first differentiate this entire thing with reference to or with respect to x and we would be getting the following. Differentiation of y squared is going to be 2 times y times dy over dx. So what I will do, I will place y dash there is equal to 2 times differentiation of x will give me 1. So I got just 2c there. So now what I can do, I can cancel the 2's there. So therefore I will have c is equal to y into y dash. So clearly since there is a presence of one arbitrary constant, I can zero it, it as the order being equal to 1. But that is not going to be enough for us to find the degree. So for getting the degree, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be taking the value of C and I'm going to substitute it into this system that we have got. So what I will do is I will take this as 1. Therefore, 1 can be rewritten as I'm going to take the value of C and place it here. So it's going to be y squared is equal to 2 times c is y into y dash times x positive 2 times my c is y into y dash times again this is going to be root of c right so it's going to be y into y dash raised to the power of 1 over 2 now I got a 1 over 2 and I got a 1 so I can add them down so that's going to be 2 times x times y into y dash positive 2 times y into y dash raised to the power of 3 over 2. Of course, I got here y squared. Now, from here, I wouldn't be in a position to find out what exactly the degree is. It's not possible. So, for that, I will have to convert this entire thing into polynomial form. So, let's do that. So, foremost, what I would like to do, I would like to push this 2 times x y into y dash to the left hand side and that would give me y squared negative 2 times x into y into y dash and this is equal to 2 times y into y dash raised to the power of 3 over 2. Now I want to get rid of this 3 over 2 so what I would do is I would be squaring both sides. Now when I square both sides, what do I get? I get y squared negative 2 times x times y into y dash raised to the power of 2 is equal to 2 times y into y dash raised to the power of 3 over 2. This is raised to the power of 2. Now this is going to give me 4. The 2 that you see here would be cancelled. So that in turn would give me y into y dash raised to the power of 3. On the left side I get a y squared 
negative 2 times x into y into y dash raised to the power of 2. So this is what I've got. Okay. Now y dash is the differential which we are looking for. So clearly the order is equal to 1. Now when it comes to the degree, now clearly you can see that you have a 2 year but you got a 3 year. So degree is nothing but the highest power of the highest order differential. So the highest power in this case is going to be equal to 3. So the solution here is 3. So that would be the, our conclusive reply or answer for this question, students. Students, we are given this question. Consider the family of circles whose center lie on the straight line y is equal to x. If this family of circles is represented by the differential equation p times y double dash positive q times y dash positive 1 is equal to 0, where p and q are functions of x, y and y dash, then we are expected to find the coefficient of y double dash, which is actually p in this case. We have to obtain the value for p and the value of p positive q. So what I would do is I will start off. Since it is a family of circles, what I will do is uh, I will take a point. Let uh, c of a comma a be the center okay, for the circle. And I'm going to take the radius to be equal to some r. So therefore, the required equation of the family of circles is going to be x negative a raised to the power of 2 positive y negative a raised to the power of 2 is equal to r squared. So I've got this. What I wish to do is I will have to differentiate. So let me just uh, differentiate this with respect to x. So there's going to be 2 times of x negative a times differentiation of x that's 1 positive 2 times of y negative a times differential of y is going to be y dash r squared is going to give me 0. So from here I can rewrite this as 2 times x negative 2 times a positive 2 times y times y dash negative 2 times a times y dash is equal to 0. So what I would do is I would in fact I can get rid of the 2 all through here. So if I were to get rid of this 2 I am going to have x positive y times y dash. I am going to push this to the other side that is going to give me a times y dash positive sign and then followed by a positive a. Okay, so I've got a, a and a, a and my intention is to get rid of this a, right? So let me have this uh, system 2. This is going to be system 2. This is my system 1. So now I would like to differentiate this again one more time. So let me state that differentiating this with respect to x again. Differential of x is 1. Now uv formula should be applied. So y into y double dash positive y dash into y dash differentiation of y is equal to a times y double dash. So differential of uh, this a is going to be constant. Now clearly from here I can isolate a. So I can rewrite this as 1 positive y times y double dash positive y dash y dash so that's going to be y dash raised to the power of 2 divided by y double dash is equal to my a. Now from here what I can do is I can actually make the substitution for a in 2. So if I were to take this as 3 using 3 in 2 we get so now what is this this is actually I can rewrite this I'm going to rewrite this I'm going to rewrite this as x positive y into y dash is equal to a times of y dash positive 1 right so all I need to do is take this uh, a and substitute it there so that's exactly what I'm going to do so clearly I can state here so 2 can be rewritten as x positive y times y dash is equal to this quantity 1 positive y into y double dash positive y dash raised to the power of 2 that's my a 
divided by y double dash times y dash positive 1. So I can rewrite it as 1 positive y dash. If I were to cross multiply, this is going to give me y double dash times x positive y into y dash is equal to. Now I can use the distributive property and remove everything off because that is what is required. I would take y, I mean 1 positive y dash and I multiply it with 1 and take 1 positive y dash multiply it with y into y double dash and take 1 positive y dash and then multiply it with y dash raised to the power of 2. This is what I'm going to be doing. Now what I will do is I will have to turn a fresh page for our calculation. So this is equal to on the left side I got y double dash times x positive y into y dash. On the right side I'm going to rewrite it as 1 positive y dash positive y into y double dash positive y double dash times y dash times y positive y dash raised to the power of 2 positive y dash raised to the power of 3. So this is what I've got. So now the requirement is we have to do some class. We should actually extract p times y double dash positive q times y dash positive 1 is equal to 0. So we will have to achieve this form. Now on the left hand side we have got y double dash times x positive y double dash times y dash times y is equal to this entire component. Now clearly you can see that I got a y double dash, y dash and y. So I can cancel these two things and that would give me one positive y dash, positive y into y double dash, positive y dash raised to the power of 2, positive y dash raised to the power of 3. So this is what I've got. Now clearly what I'm going to do is I'm going to take y double dash out. If I take y double dash out I get a y and I would get a x over here. In fact if this thing comes over here this is not going to be positive it's going to be negative right. So I need to place the negative sign there. And then I would like to take y dash. So y dash, if I were to take y dash, now there is a y dash here and followed by a y dash and then followed by a y dash raised to the power of 2. Right? So what have we done? We have got rid of this. We have got rid of this. We have got rid of this we have actually got rid of this also right but there is a positive one there so let's place that positive one there and on this side it's going to be equal to zero now we can rewrite this rewriting we get so what do we get we get i'll start with y double dash y double dash of y negative x positive y dash of 1 positive y dash positive y dash raised to the power of 2 positive 1 is equal to 0. So this is what is required. Clearly the value of p is y negative x and we can also obtain the value of q probably p positive q whatever that is required. Now clearly we can see the value of q is 1 positive y dash positive y dash raised to the power of 2 now from here, if they are asking P positive Q, my P is Y negative X positive Q is 1 positive Y dash positive Y dash raised to the power of 2. If you want to rewrite this, you can rewrite this as 1 followed by negative X and then a Y and then a Y dash and then a Y dash raised to the power of 2. So this is my P positive Q. So this is a beautiful question. We have achieved it and we'll move on to the next question. Students were asked this question, the degree and order of a differential equation of the family of parabolas with the axis being given to be present on the x-axis. So this is the axis of the parabola. 
right the axis of the parabola is found to be lying on the x axis so if you were to draw the parabola then the parabola's shape would be something of this fashion and uh, the coordinates present here over here this is going to be p comma some zero so this is the parabola we are talking about so the equation of the parabola in this case is going to be y negative 0 raised to the power of 2 is equal to some 4 times a x negative p okay so using this we will have to get rid of the constants so this is going to be y squared is equal to 4 times a x negative 4 times a times p I'm going to differentiate this with re reference to x this is going to give me 2 times y 2 times y times the differential of y is going to be y dash is equal to 4 times a differential of x is 1 this will vanish so from here I can clearly get rid of this 2 and I would hence uh, y into y dash is equal to 2a I will have to apply uv formula and this is going to be y times y double dash positive y dash times differential of y is going to be y dash is equal to this is a constant I get a 0 so I get y into y double dash positive y dash raised to the power of 2 is equal to 0 they wanted us to get the degree first and then the order for this question so clearly the degree is the highest quantity or the highest number that is present on the highest order differential so in this case the degree is 1 so place 1 here and the order is 2 so make sure to observe what is required first in this question they wanted the degree to be placed first and followed by the order so that is the conclusion for this question students. students we are given this question the question is we are expected to form the differential equation which is representing the family of parabolas with the axis parallel to y axis and whose lattice rectum in fact whose length of the lattice rectum is the distance of the point 2 comma negative 3 from the line 3x positive 4y is equal to 5 is given by so we are expected to form the differential equation now there are few things that we will have to know now the first thing is the shape of the parabola where the axis is parallel to the y-axis so this is case one I'm going to give you two important cases axis parallel to y-axis so that parabola would look something of this nature okay so this is x-axis this is y-axis and if you were to draw the parabola then the axis is parallel to y-axis so this would be the axis of the parabola so if this is going to be the shape of the parabola and these two are the axis but the major axis that we are talking about is this one this is the major axis because that would be the axis of the parabola now uh, the equation for this would be of this fashion x negative alpha now when we say alpha comma beta to be the vertex so that's exactly what we have to be represented here so there's going to be x negative alpha raised to the power of 2 is equal to 48 times y negative beta so this is going to be one family of parabola whose axis is parallel to y axis so this is very important now 4a this is the lattice rectum now I'm going to show you how to calculate the lattice rectum in the following section now after this we will have to go for the case 2 now what is case 2 now case 2 is the axis axis parallel to x axis 
right? So what would the parabola look like? Suppose we are talking about a parabola which has its axis parallel to the x-axis. So let me just draw that here. So this is going to be my x-axis and y-axis. So I'm basically talking about an axis parallel to the x-axis. So this is the axis of the parabola. Now since it is parallel to x-axis, the shape of the parabola in this case would look something like this. Okay, this will be the shape. And uh, probably you can take this point as some p comma q. Now if this point is some p comma q, then the equation for this parabola would be y negative q raised to the power of 2 is equal to 4 times a x negative p. All right. If you remember the previous question, in previous question we add a parabola of this form and we add y negative 0 raised to the power of 2 is equal to 4a times x negative p. This to be the equation because p has been the coordinate p comma 0 is the point on the x-axis. In this case it's on the x-axis. But uh, in this case this is actually the axis of the parabola is parallel to x-axis. So this would be the shape. Right, and the coordinates will be p comma q, and that is the reason instead of zero being here, we got a q here because this is the vertex of the parabola. So y negative q raised to the power of two is equal to four a times x negative p, where the lattice rectum is four a. So we got two families of parabolas, which is very critical and which is very important as far as problem solving is concerned. So we will move on to the next this question we would be using x negative alpha raised to the power of 2 is equal to 4a times y negative beta. So this will be the required family of curves. Apparently we will have to find out the lattice rectum. Now it is given in the question that the length of the lattice rectum is the distance of the point 2 comma negative 3 from the line 3x positive 4y is equal to 5. So what I would like to do, I would like to find the magnitude. So in this case, I all I need to do is to take the value for x as 2 and y as negative 3 and substitute it in this equation. 3x positive 4y negative 5 is equal to 0. So and then I need to find the magnitude. So this is how we need to do that. So the lactose rectum is equal to 3 of 2 positive 4 of negative 3 negative 5 divided by 5 and this is going to give me 11 over 5. Now take the lactose rectum 11 over 5 and substitute it over here. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So this is going to be x negative alpha raised to the power of 2 is equal to 11 over 5 times y negative beta. Now I will be differentiating this with reference to x or with respect to x. So differentiating this with respect to x we would get 2 times of x negative alpha into differential of x that's 1. 11 over 5 is a constant so I differentiate y it's going to give me y dash. So now I have got 2 times x negative 2 times alpha negative I mean it is equal to 11 over 5 times y dash. Now I need to get rid of this uh, alpha which I can do by differentiating this again with respect to x and that would give me 2 is equal to 11 over 5 times y double dash. So you can either write it like this or you can write it like this. 10 is, you can cross multiply and write it as 10 is equal to 11 times y double dash or you can write it like this. 11 times d squared y over dx squared is equal to 10. So both these things are okay. 
but I will, uh, depending upon what is present in the choice. So that is the end of the solution for this quest. Welcome students. In this class, we are expected to find the order of the differential equation of the given family of curves. Now, of course, you will be thinking that, well, the number of arbitrary constants would uh, give us the order. First and foremost uh, technique that we need to adopt here to find the order of the differential equation is that we will have to first simplify the given system and then we will be able to see the true picture. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to rewrite this as c1 times e raised to the power of c2 times e raised to the power of x positive c3 times e raised to the power of x positive c4 times e raised to the power of x. Now from here what I would do is I would rewrite by taking e raised to the power of x out. So if I were to do that I would get c1 times e raised to the power of c2 positive c3 positive c4 times e raised to the power of x. Now you can clearly see that I can always replace this entire quantity by means of a single arbitrary constant. So in other words, I am just left with a system which has just one parameter in place. So the order in this case will be equal to 1. As we are given the question, we expect it to find the order of the differential equation of the family of circles touching the x-axis. Now let us visualize this question. So we got the x-axis here. Now we are talking about all circles which are touching the x-axis. So we can have a circle like this. It touches the x-axis. We can have a circle like this. It touches the x-axis. And we can also cir have circles like this which is touching the x-axis. Now we can draw infinite number of circles. Now, what is the most important point that we will have to observe here is, say, for example, if this point is, say, some A comma 0, and the point over here, the radius is, say, 3 units, right? Now, clearly, if you want to know the coordinate of the y-axis in this case it is going to be a comma 3 right the point over here is going to be a comma 3 now if you were to draw the equation of the circle touching the x-axis what would be the equation in this case now clearly we know that if a comma b be the center of a circle center of the circle then the equation of the circle would be x negative a raised to the power of 2 positive y negative b raised to the power of 2 is equal to r squared right because a comma b is the center of the circle so in this case what would be the equation of the circle so that's going to be x negative a raised to the power of 2 positive y negative 3 raised to the power of 2 is equal to r squared now what is my r squared my r squared is going to be my 3 squared so in other words what are we talking about here the center for any circle which is touches the x-axis would always be the equation of the circle would always be x negative a raised to the power of 2 positive y negative r raised to the power of 2 is equal to r squared this is going to be the equation of the circle touching the x-axis so what is the number of parameters that you can see here so the number of parameters that you can see here is 1 and 1, 2 and that would mean the order of the differential equation is going to be equal to 2. So that is the end of the solution for this question.